Symbols and numbers. Symbols. Don't be nervous. You go first. Way to break the silence. Yeah. All right. Also, after I'll take deck profiles from both of you guys. It's recording, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lasers and special effects for the damage. How much damage did you say? Five. One, two, three, fire fist. Four, five. Drop a turn. Uh, 1350. Yeah, I'll just be taking that. Alright, you will be taking two damage. Also 750. Six, seven damage. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Drop turn. Play three. And play Strata. Three, two, one. Girth. I've got no re rolls. All right. All right. I guess just two damage. Drop turn. We'll play four for Winton because of Strata who makes him two less. Six, seven, eight, nine. So, oh, we're gonna have plus one for each energy card. Yeah. So, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Um, two, what's he holding? Nope. I have a green fist. Three, there you go. Ten. So it likes to stick out just out of its ball form. There we go. Clip won't go in. Obviously, you can't be. It's a fixed story. Uh, one for last. Just the the Bakugan that don't want to go together. I picked all of them. Gorthion. <laughs> Except for Gorthion, yeah. Gorthion, man. Gorthion? Yeah, Gorthion. He's got that girth. <laughs> Drop turn. Sitting at 
I'm gonna pay one, two, three, four. Evolving the Titan Phaedrus, and I'm also at sixteen fifty. Two, nineteen. Pay one. Matched. Here we go with our top finisher, Ivan Leigert, at the R at the RIW Games and Hobbies uh, Bakugan Age of Orlis pre-release. He's going to take us through his deck profile for the sealed-ish event we had, and to show us how he pulled off the five uh, the five rounds that he needed to do. So we went four Swiss and then a top cut of two more rounds. Got him the Titan Dragonoid. Uh, or the exclusive Dragonoid set to put yes, on his shelf. Yes. It's, uh, it's an honor. So let's go through your Bakugan first. Talk about right. what starter you started with, how it impacted your pull, or how your pulls impacted your build, and then walk us through the build. So All which right. three uh, Bakugan did you go with today, and for what reasons? Today I had gone with uh, Gorthion Ultra, a Phaedrus Ultra, and Nobilius Ultra. Um, with the build today, uh, I happened to get the Arliss Nobilius deck, um, and decided that using uh, Arliss was not going to be uh, a great idea, just due to the lack of cards, and I ended up going with Ventus due to uh, the amount of cards that I had gotten in my set. Um, no... Phaedrus was kind of the, the main one, as it was the only Evo that I had pulled during the, uh, my packs. So I was able to use the Phaedrus, and because Phaedrus had a Fire Fist, I was able to use Nobilius to capitalize on its um, Fire Fist that it had, and then was able to use Gorthion to put in the Shield Core for Nobilius as well, to try and make sure that Nobilius could get high power and that Phaedrus could get high power. All right, and what cores did we did we go with today? I ended up going with a 650 and a 300 onto Gorthion. It helped with just keeping the B power up and making sure that I could get ahead. I then had a 150 plus four and a 150 plus two. 
Getting the 150s are always good just because on the fist cores, that's the most you can get. Um, and on the fire core or fire fist, while 250 is my highest that I could have gotten, I ended up going with the 150 plus four for the little bit of extra damage just because both Nobilius and Gortheon only had damage of two. And then finally, 150 plus four and 650. So it. standard shield red fist core for Nobilius. So yep. Cool. All right. And let's uh, see what you got in the deck here. All right. So for my deck, I went with my chaos cards. I have my two flips of Confuse. This is uh, honestly where a lot of the inspiration for the Fire Fist and Shields came from, was being able to play Confuse for anybody who's trying to land on them. Uh, we also have in here two Trick Trap. And Trick Trap was just going to allow me to play any of the heroes that I had uh, drawn into my hand easily. We have two Constrictor, and two Constrictor really helps me out with just blocking out uh, Bakugan with the Fist Core. Many Bakugan have fists, and the Helix was also good. Um, many have that. And then I have a Cyndia Stand. Uh, just to help with some extra damage. I didn't actually end up playing it, but it was an interesting card. So another burn card. Uh, and then we got a Ventus Web Whip, which was just there to help with uh, blocking some damage as well. Just trying to keep that back. And that's your, that's your flip set? Those are all my flips. I'll go over my heroes next. Where I've got the new Winton. Uh, the new Winton does give you... An energy or uh, damage for each energy you have, which at first didn't sound very good, but ended up being uh, really good, just being that and turn it into eight. Yeah, I, I saw him doing a lot of work in that final round. Um, he seems like he's really good. Um, I don't know about the six cost, but I, when you pair him up how you did with Strata, Strata, who he actually looks really good at a four cost. So. Four cost is not that bad, and being able to play him down, um, especially being able to do a roll, win, and slap Winton down, is really helpful. Who also helps with that damage, just getting my uh, double strike in there. And especially if you can get the double strike and the Winton, crazy damage. We also had two Emily, which uh, just kind of burns a little bit. It helped out a little bit, not too much. It was mostly just a uh, an energy placement. I was gonna say, did, did your Emily actually hit the board? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, usually not. And lastly was Jenkins, who wasn't necessarily the best, but as you saw, uh, it did win me my uh, was the first first round of top cut, right? Yes, first yeah. round of top cut sealed was the, won. Sealed the deal due to Jenkins, and it was. Well, I probably could have won uh, without it. He, he it was very, it damage, was, right? it was very cheesy. <laughs> it was very cheesy. Cool. Is that your hero set? It was all my heroes. All right. So, what do we get for action cards? Uh, and how much did you? Swap? I, I'll actually really quick go over Evos because it oh, is uh, right. that card. <laughs> There's my Evos. It seems like uh, so. Second place, uh, Evan only had one evolution as well, and I think I had two. I think most people were running like roughly one or two out of the packs. So it was, for Getting, it's kind of funny because for how many Evos came in your packs, nobody was really running what you got. Like, I think a lot of it is the evolutions that are available are for Bakugan that we don't have yet. And it, that was, was a lot of the problem. That was very true with this set. Many of the Bakugan that you would pull from this set didn't come with, um, you know, you, you didn't have the Bakugan to play them. And even if you did have them, they were either mediocre cores that uh, were also very mediocre or um, they were just too high, too high cost. I agree with that. And All right, so, so single Evo for the win. And the rest we've got. Let's see what we got here. Action cards. All right, let's see what we got. So we'll start with Chaos with standard energy draw. It gives you a good plus 500 base. Mm -hmm. There's a good way to start off. Chaos Blessing. Gives you a good reroll. I did use it for the damage. I usually don't. I did end up using uh, the damage from this, which was very nice. Just without using the reroll. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of that card. Next, we got Holy Flame, so this which is, these, also is a very good staple. So these six are staples in the box set that you got. Yes. These are all cards that were... Uh, they were just so good. Can't get rid of those cards. And uh, I even wanted to make a point with this. Is um, I only ran one fist core, which honestly was a mistake. <laughs> I should have one green fist. You're saying yes. Okay. I should have ran more green fist in order to capitalize on top of my holy flame. But luckily for me, many people were coming out with green fists as well as um, due to. The lack of synergy, uh, you could count on that plus 300 and not have to worry about losing due to it. Next, we got Anger for two. Anger was a good one, uh, just a little bit of beat power. I think I did pull off the draw once, but mostly for the beat power. We had one dual strike, which was definitely for the reroll. Uh, I didn't use it for the double strike, didn't plan on using it for a double strike. Simply a reroll card. I had Infernal Cannon, which Ooh, that's a beauty. is a I got it in this beautiful hex foil. Um, I didn't end up using it, but I probably pulled it every single time, and so, I I kind of put it in here in case I had a completely dead hand. If I fair. had nothing, I could play it down and do it. And currently, this is the only card that does a complete hand wipe like this. So that's, yeah, like you said, there is, because there's no mulligan in the game, this is actually kind of a safe card to play. It takes a little while to get it, but if you pull it, then you, you can kind of recover from a dead hand if you've lasted four, four rounds. While um, it may have not been amazing in this strategy, obviously it'll be really good if you can uh, use Darkest to look at your opponent's hand, and that would be really good. Uh, we next got two quick fire. I mean, it's quick you, fire. <laughs> you can't not play quick fire if you're playing Pyrus, and no. that's a fact. So, yeah, I mean, quick fire was, I think, was one of the most used cards at, um, at uh, AX, the big, big tournament, you know? So it, everybody's hot on the quick fire. Now, what I noticed as well, because I was watching on the sidelines, unfortunately for me, um, in your final round, you held on to a quick fire for quite a long time and actually never played it. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, because, so obviously, the reroll was more important than the one damage for you. Absolutely. The whole game. Absolutely. Especially with the rest of my deck where I only have three other ones, other, or uh, reroll cards rather, other than quick fire. I need to hold that quick fire because that is an instant definite reroll comparatively to the ping to, to land it. And you if can all, I if you I can lose this in the last in the end step or something if you have to if I miss on my quick fire, I brought no other difference to what is happening. Whereas if I played paid two for it, there goes my two energy that I could have played for my flip cards. I agree. Next, we've got Twisting Inferno. This was absolutely just for the core removal. I knew that that. Horrible Arliss Hydronoid was here today. <laughs> Getting this card into my deck was amazing. Especially against stuff like that with a Chaos Tritonium. Just, I never actually pulled that card during the whole time, but it looked nice just as a little bit of a B power thing and maybe just trying to screw with my opponent a little bit. Sure, that's fair. Uh, we have one regrowth, which gave me plus three. Oh man, the art on the new stuff is looking is really cool. Beautiful. I love, uh, Beautiful some of these stuff. are really cool. Alright. I had three of the sleep wave for the minus damage. And actually I was counting on using the uh, artless bit uh, the artless ability. Until I realized I took the Arliss card out of my deck. <laughs> and then I realized this was a dead card. But it was okay. It wasn't bad, and it was still a great card to place down for energy. We had a four cost with Ventus Body Slam for minus 900. And I can confirm this is one of my new favorite cards. Getting for four energy and being able to get to minus 900 that's pretty good. 
coming from a guy who loves the blue stuff. I and that's right. I love blue, um, and, and, and right. being able to play it for three and get to a thousand. Whereas, you know, you had um, Oak and Shield before, which you could get to 900. If you had the most energy, was, now you can get this. And so this is literally body or by shield or whatever. Venta shield? I can't remember. Oak and exactly. Shield. Oak and Shield, thank you. Um, this is exactly Oak and Shield without any of the effects on it. Without the conditions. Yes. Yep. And... It makes the cards so much better. I agree. Plus, you can't you can't beat Trox doing a body slam off the top of ring, man. That if, you know, that's that's beautiful. I like that, that is stuff. really good. I like, I like good art like this. We had one Ventus charge, which also was a mistake. A, um, a mistake to play. Yes, putting that I did. I was able to play it and do one damage, but. You know, uh, it, I was no. There was no way you're gonna get the condition right. There's no way I was gonna get to 15, yeah. and maybe I could have. If I had cards that I could play as energy, but then I didn't play Arliss, so I couldn't do that, making that card worthless. In there, why not? Lastly, I've got 100. Um, if your, you know, your, your other choice for this would have been um, the one cost minus uh, 500, if you only, or if it's not Ventus, but obviously, if you're against a Ventus deck, that's a huge problem. So being able to put this in here for minus 300 for one, is really good. Um, and honestly, from old, like you were saying, I'm a big fan of Aquas. Uh, a lot of the cards right here, especially with Ventus, have been really helpful, um, lower cost comparatively than uh, the last couple sets, which really help with um, wanting to put Ventus into my real deck. So on, so on the day, you ended 3-1 and one in Swiss. Yes. And you won the top two cut, obviously. And so what, what would you say would be the, like, if you had to pick one factor of what, what you had today to, to selection, what, or was it just luck play and you made it happen? Like, what would you, what would you pinpoint it on? Um, if you ask me the same question when we started, or even maybe one game in, I probably would have said luck. Um, at this point... I definitely think it's due to my core synergy. Um, being able to have these four cores that just really, really help you out, um, especially with Nobilius, who I can land on any four of these cores and win the battle, pretty much. Um, Gorthion having quite a few B power and him being the weakest of the bunch, but really being able to have a lot of the same cores and know where to shoot and um, how hard to shoot, determining on uh, how hard your opponent shoots, really is a, a big, huge thing. And I don't think without the uh, the core synergy and Nobilius here, I don't think I could have won today. Sweet, man. Yeah. Well, you did win, and uh, you now take home the limited edition Dragonoids that I know you've been looking to put on your shelf for a while. Yes. So very great. much congratulations. Thank you very much. thank you for the deck profile. No problem. All right. Uh, this is Monty Kev at REW Hobbies and Games. I'm here with Evan Brisky, our number two, uh, our second place Age of Oralis player. We're going to go over his second place deck profile right now. So, uh, Evan, why don't you tell us about, first tell us about the three Bakugan that you decided to choose and what went into making those choices based on what you pulled. So, the original plan was hopefully to end up getting the Oralis Nobilius deck and then just building the, the Pyrus Chaos Oralis build off of that. I got screwed with Hydronoid, uh, and I ended up not getting enough cards in the six packs I pulled to be, be able to make a, a Pyrus Chaos Oralis. So I had to substitute one of those for something else in there because the Hydronoid deck only has six Pyrus cards. Um, so I ended up using uh, Darkus uh, Krikelios Ultra uh, because it's basically... It's basically Hydronoid, but better. Uh, or at least it's easier to use. It has a more longevity to it. Uh, because Hydronoid's Evo comes out at turn 6 and is only 808, I believe. I pulled one of them. And this guy is 
601 on turn one, double helix, same cores, plus 200 went on a helix core. So I just ran two of the, uh, the plus 300, uh, plus three helix cores, and he was doing pretty good. Um, so for the other two, I did stick to my original plan and went with uh, Chaos Tertonium Core and Orlis Hydronoid Ultra, uh, which both benefit greatly from Flaming Fist, being able to uh, get um, 1455 on Hydronoid and uh, 1058 on Tertonium without any Evos. Uh, nice. As far as Evos go, the only Evo I actually pulled that I could use was uh, one Hyper Chaos Tertonium, which at turn two gets him up to uh, 1659. So it's ridiculously good. All right, and what about the, so that's your, the evolutions that you drew and your Bakugan that you selected. How was your pack pull and combined with the deck? So I see that you, you switched up and went Oralis, so you dropped the six Pyrus cards out of the pack? Yeah, I dropped Pyrus and Aquas, um, because I really didn't have any good Aquas options, uh, especially since I was tr trying to maximize the Flaming Fist build, which is really beneficial for uh, Hydronoid and Tritonium here. Uh, so what'd you, let's see what you come up with. <laughs> so, so, like, I kept pretty much almost the entirety of the darkest section of the deck. I took out Mind Control, uh, just because I didn't feel like it was a very useful card, but I've got... Um, two shadow dogs here i didn't really get to use them i used them once uh in the final round uh and i was actually able to get uh hyper tritonium to actually land on the proper core that time so it was up to 20 20 50 b power on that turn uh, uh in addition to shadow dogs we have a shadow cloak again something i didn't really actually end up getting to use it mostly just got energized because even with uh because I wasn't using any shields, so it doesn't get any the uh, Shadow Strike. And then it's just a damage booster, and a damage booster for 5 cost is very difficult to actually use. But, you know what, it was, a, it was good energy. Uh, Thunderbolt did see quite a bit of use, just because it's a 1, one cost, three, 3 damage boost. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, I thought I was running more than just one dust to dust but i guess i only have the one unless i got it yeah yeah i only i only have the one so there was that um dark path not they're not quite on par b power boosters but with what i had i, I made use i made use of what i had so two two energy for plus 300 b um again not quite on par damage booster or b power boosters here Instant Vortex, um, three three cost plus four hundred B, and it gave me the ability to draw a card every time I used it. Uh, just because I have Orlis Bakugan on my team, um, I'm actually quite digging that Orlis Orlis power effect. Um, I had one Growing Giant, five five energy for plus nine hundred B. Uh, if it, you're in domination, plus fifteen hundred B instead. Again, I didn't actually ever get to use that. I just energized it. Um, Phoenix Fire, I got two of those. Um, so it's Battle Mastery, choose one, plus, plus three Frost Strike or, or Double Strike. Um, I should have used this in the final round to get uh, Frost Strike and, set it, and then went to, uh, went to the top card of my deck to determine who would win that battle, but instead I chose for B-Power Boost to win and uh, ultimately, ultimately lost me the game. Um, uh, two wipe mines uh again this is just something i was filling my deck with because i didn't have much options uh <laughs> so it's minus three damage for two energy and if i have an orless back on my team i can choose a player to discard a card uh since i don't have any discard fodder anytime i'd use something that was like that i would just choose my opponent to discard a card um lightning got two of those um just Pretty decent hero for plus three damage whenever you open. Uh, we got two hack attack. This is a card I really like, even if the the damage boost is below par, because it's for four four energy. You get plus seven damage, and with an Orlis, you can choose a player to discard a card. Nice. It's a little bit under par, but just by one damage point and being able to discard, have an opponent discard a card, 
that's uh, that actually proved pretty useful. Um, oh, I had one more hack attack. Oh, you pulled three hack attacks? Yes. Nice. Um, I pulled two anchor strikes. These did see some use to completely negate damage against stuff like, uh, like I think Pyrus Nobilius. I, I just said, no, you're not dealing damage to me. <laughs> Because he didn't pick up a damage boosting core, so. Nice, I like this card. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. We have a uh, three Might of Darkness. Um, this is a really good card for uh, plus five hundred B and two damage for for three cost. Oh, it's... you had great darkest pull. Yeah, in exactly. Your packs. And then I got like tons of really good evos, but like I can't use them because yeah. it's like Zentor and Claptor. Like I can't use like, those. That's two. You had two. You drew two play sets out of your packs for your darkest. Yeah, that, that's a great. That's a um, great draw. Additionally, I got, um, oh no, this is the next one. Uh, Darkest Petrify. Again, I used this once to completely negate a, a damage against me one turn. Uh, aside from that, they did see quite a bit of energizing. And then the last two action cards, um, Darkest Blast. Six energy for plus 1200B. It's basically a worse version of uh, the Aquas card. Yeah, I, I have, I ran the Aquas and I have that version. I noticed that too, so I didn't even put these in my deck because it's, yeah. it's worse, it's a worse version. So. Yeah, but it did save me because um, I think against against your, your daughter, she played, a, played that Aquas card. And I just played this the same turn, and it just that, that's what won won me that match. Nice. But, uh, and lastly, we're on to the flips. Uh, so we got two Sonic Shields here. It's just what, one crutch, energy. Crutch from the starter. Yeah, uh, I used. I think I used all the darkest flips from the starter. So there's only four, I believe. Uh, and then of course we got darkest snare, zero energy, stop a magic shield. And then I got one Hex Futility from the boosters, which was, uh, per, so that's, a, I like these uh, two cost uh, three, three faction stops. Uh, just, that's really versatile and it's a big counter against um, Orless Titan Dragonoid Ultra. Um, and then lastly, I had uh, two vacuums, uh, just zero energy stop Orless. This did come in handy one time. Uh, other times it just got energized. And then the last two cards in my deck were uh, Fierce Charge. It's just the Outsider's block for Orlis. It's, nice. Uh, I got lucky and pulled two of those. So I was... Wow, so you, so you actually pulled some really solid things. Like a couple, So a couple play sets from Darkest, which ultimately you decided to go Darkest um, and, and drop the... Uh, so you went Orlis and dropped... Actually, you dropped both Aquas yeah, and Pyrus. Aquas and Pyrus were just gone from my deck. Wow. Because I, I wasn't drew... planning on using... I was only planning on using Pyrus out of those three factions, and ultimately, I didn't get enough Pyrus support because the deck only has six Pyrus cards, and I drew, like I think, like eight Pyrus cards I could use because I pulled some worthless Evos. Um, well, worthless because we don't have the actual Bakugan yet. Um, and then I... Like, I didn't pull enough Chaos cards. Like, he's the... Chaos cards you saw in there were the only Chaos action cards I had. Those were the only Chaos cards I had aside from Evos. Um, and then I pretty much just threw in every single Oralist card I could. And then all the darkest cards too that I could just to fill that deck up to 40. Awesome. It was a well, congratulations on your second place. Well, thank you. Thank you for the deck profile.